and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to show you this watch which is a recent addition to my collection and it is the San Martin BB58 SN0003 I think it is. Anyway if I've stuffed that up then I'll put the correct model number down there. Uh, anyway I purchased this watch on the AliExpress anniversary sale a few weeks ago and uh, I must say I've not really been a big fan of the Tudor Black Bay. It's not been something that's on my radar as a piece that I wanted to get. Uh, whether that be the real thing or a homage, quite frankly. But uh, whilst I was scouring on AliExpress, I came across San Martin's uh, uh, store, had a look, and the video on it showed it to be quite blingy. Um, it had a real nice uh, mirror sort of finish on those indices, and the, um, uh, the bezel really did have a very nice sheen to it. So I thought, you know what, stuff it. We'll order this, see what it looks like. So I'm gonna put some footage up for you now. We'll go through the various aspects of the watch, but please do tell me what you guys think. I do also uh, put a link in the description for, uh, uh, I suppose, a, a direct link to where I got this from. To be clear though, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form. I'm not being asked to do this review. I bought this with my hard earned money uh, and my thoughts are my own. Uh, so I just want to clear that up. Anyway guys, let's take a look at this and see what you think. So here we have it guys, the SN008 from San Martin, which as you can see is a homage to the Tudor Black Bay 58. Now I was initially attracted to this watch because of the video on the San Martin site showing that gorgeous glossy ceramic bezel. So put in the, uh, the coin and ordered it and around about seven or eight days later it arrived here in Sydney, Australia and I'm really pleased to say that it has not disappointed. Now it is substantially more than what I pay for say a Pagani at around about $170 versus the 320 odd that I spent on this. So really keen to show you it and uh, keen to hear what your thoughts are as well on this particular watch. We'll kick things off with the dimensions of the watch. Uh, you do have a 40 mil diameter, not including that crown. Um, you have female end links on the um, uh, bracelet though, so it does fit very, very nicely on that wrist. Put a couple of picks up here for you to show you uh, what that looks like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Um, in terms of height, so from top of bottom lug, you've got 49.3 mils. Uh, you've got 11.9 mils there, there about 12 mils of thickness and you've got 20 mil lug width so you can fit straps and that quite easily to uh, change the look of this watch. We'll start things with uh, I suppose a broader view of what that uh, bezel and dial look like in a bit of sunlight. You can see there it really does have a very nice sheen and gloss to it that, uh, that I find really pleasing anyway. In closer detail, the engraving on that bezel is really, really good and the loom pip being slightly recessed uh, was certainly something that uh, I felt was a little bit better than that raised sort of pip which I have found through experience can be scratched or knocked off and just make the watch look a little bit scruffy. I have to say that I'm really impressed with the finishing on this case. You've got those lovely brushed um, tops and sides and then just on the edges there that nice polished chamfering. I'm sure over time it's going to get scratched and dinged and what have you but for the time being as a new watch the finishing on this watch is absolutely fantastic. Another point to make is the bezel action on this watch is really really good. Uh, I found it to be very crisp, precise and uh, very little back play but I'll shut up now and let you hear what that bezel action sounds like. Whilst the front of the watch is really nice to look at, the rear was just as pleasing to me. I really like the understated, non-engraved component that this watch has. Um, I'm not a big fan of engravings on the rear of the watch unless it's a personal or a sentimental sort of engraving. But uh, like I say, this I found really to be understated, quite clean and um, just, just exudes a little bit of class, I think. The side of the bezel's got really crisp engraving, so those teeth, uh, very nice, easy to grip to adjust that bezel. You can see there you do have a slightly domed sapphire crystal. Again, the finishing on the side of the watch really nice with those polished edges and that nice San Martin assigned crown. 
turning our attention to the bracelet, I was not a big fan of that riveted sort of look that you find on the original Tudor Black Bay. So San Martin's decision to go with something that's more akin to what you find on the Rolex Submariner uh, was probably a bit of a bonus for me, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, you do have 20 mm end links, solid end links at that as well. And you do have that nice uh, signed uh, engraved San Martin clasp. Machining overall I found to be very very good and the tolerances there was very little flex in that bracelet. I couldn't really find any sharp edges or certainly nothing that uh, that would concern me on a day-to-day -day basis. The one thing I would say though is because of that clasp having that sort of brushed finish you can see there there are a few scratches already from uh, actually scratching on my MacBook uh, just aluminium on steel so just be aware your watch isn't going to be uh, staying perfect for too long. Loom on the watch, very, very good. You can see there that photo showing the bright blue. Uh, once it's settled down, it does have a longevity to it that will see you throughout the night. So 3 a.m., 4 a.m., low light situation, checking the time on your wrist. If you do wear your watch in bed, uh, you're going to have no problems at all with this. Time for a bit of macro footage now, guys. So you can see the hands and the indices there. They've got that mirror sort of finish on them, which uh, really complements that shiny bezel. And in my opinion, just makes the watch look a lot more expensive than that 300 bucks would suggest. Really interesting though, I, when I actually took some macro footage of that dial, I found it to sort of have a bit of a lighter finish at the center and then exuding out into a much darker blue. Uh, you probably see it there on that, um, that footage, but it has a sort of a speckled um, shimmery sort of effect, if, if that makes sense. It doesn't present like that from a distance, but when you look at it close up in this macro footage, it really does look very, very nice. So here's the watch on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. As I mentioned, it does have female end links, so it isn't as tall as that 49 mil would uh, suggest. And at 40 mils in diameter, I think it fits really quite well on my wrist. Personally speaking, I think anybody with six and a half inch wrist uh, or above is gonna be able to wear this quite easily. I have put it there on a strap as well for you, so you can see dressing it down a little bit. And uh, the strap, makes this watch feel very very light that is a sailcloth strap by artem uh, guys who are a uh, strap manufacturer out of adelaide here in south australia so i'm going to do some footage uh, and a bit of a review on those straps in a later video but found it to be really comfortable with this particular watch Whilst overall I'm really impressed with the quality of this watch and the finishing, there is one minor niggle and that is the fact that this watch doesn't have a date window on that dial. Now that makes for a very clean and balanced look, uh, but the movement inside used on this is the Seiko NH35, which does have a date functionality. So the end result is you screw that crown out, pull it out to the first position and you've got a date function and no window to show that date function. Pull it out to the second and obviously you can adjust the time. Now Pagani to their credit uh, on the Doxa homage that I reviewed very recently had no such issues because it was using the Seiko NH38A which doesn't have a date functionality. So it's a very simple unscrew the crown, pop it out to the first position, adjust the time pop it back in, screw it in, and job done. Now, for San Martin to be using the NH35A, I personally feel it's a little bit of a misstep. It's not in line with how this watch uh, is perceived by myself anyway uh, as a you know slightly more expensive or you know what uh, if I hope this makes sense a luxury Chinese brand uh, it is a step above in my opinion above what you find in finishing from Pagani and some other brands and the pricing does reflect that so I, I hope what you mean I hope you understand what I mean there guys but like I say for me that was a real misstep use the Seiko NH38 guys in the next version it really does make more sense to have no date function on the movement when you don't have a date window. There you have it guys, that's my overall view and uh, I suppose opinion on the San Martin SN008. Uh, I'd be keen to hear what you guys think about this particular watch, especially those that are considering buying it or already own it. Uh, like I say, uh, opinions are uh, good or bad are really useful for the channel. So please feel free to uh, put your comments in the section below. I will come back to you if you do have a question. 
but uh, thanks ever so much for taking the time to watch the video. I wish you all well, and I will see you in a new video soon. Take care, guys. Bye.